Kuzampu, hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the most curiously asked questions online, uh, especially from the people of Nepal and Nepali speaking people from other countries. And the question is how do people of Bhutan know Nepali or uh, how come there are Nepali speaking people in Bhutan? So let's go ahead and find out about the history of Nepali speaking people of Bhutan, including myself. So the first Nepali speaking people of Bhutan migrated to Bhutan during the Pinakazong construction and uh, it was during the Shabtrung's time Shabtrungawal Namgyal uh, one of the founders of Bhutan Nepali speaking people were found uh, to be they, they had good architecture skills so they were invited to Bhutan during the Pinakazong construction by the Shabtrung that was during the 17th century and Likewise, Nepali speaking people migrated to Bhutan during the Second King's time, uh, that was His Majesty King Jimmy Wancho's time. I too hail from a uh, Nepali speaking community of Bhutan. Actually, it's not Nepali, but then we are known as Lotsampas. Lotsampa, which, which means the southerners. Lo means south. And some of us mix southerners all together. The language we speak is not called Nepali when it comes to Bhutan. Language is known as Hatsam Kha. Kha here means language, so the language of the southerner or the south. And to talk about how I exist in Bhutan and how my ancestors reached Bhutan, uh, well, I am Dungendi Monger from Bhutan and the place I am from is known as Seram, the district. To talk about my hometown Seram, well Seram uh, during that time maybe there was a civil war, uh, some kind of a war going on, uh, most probably it was a civil war and then all the people, the whole village was massacred during that time there was no not a single living person in the village there was just one survivor and it was a lady pregnant lady she ran and hid in, into the waterfalls inside the waterfalls and Chirang for me it translates to before it was Chirang Chirang so maybe just one survivor was there so it was known as Chira, just one, Chira, and then now it's Chira, maybe include oneself in, you know, C means include, Rang means oneself, Chira, that's my, my guess, <laughs> I don't know what, what's your thought, and if you know anything about Chira, please let, let me know, I would be interested. And then the pregnant lady who escapes the massacre, she gave birth inside the waterfall. It was a son, and my grandmothers, well, my, my maternal grandmothers, uh, had told uh, my parents that when they were small kids, maternal grandmother, she she used to see that uh, the survivor's son riding a horse around the village swinging a lash and his name was Tage Raza I mean, Tage means the waterfall in the Nepali language so he was born into the, from the waterfall so Tange Raza Raja means the king so king of the waterfalls my first ancestor in Bhutan was my great great grandfather that would be my grandfather's grandfather and he was said to be migrated from Sikkim he had his son that would be my grandfather's father so my grandfather's father 
was uh, just a kid, small kid during that time, and he was carried on a bamboo basket, and he was brought up in Bhutan. And to go in details about my village, my hometown, my hometown is known as a village is known as Toling Kargewa. Initially, it was known as Tokana, but now it's Tolinka. But there is not much of changes. The toll is still there. So, Tolinka, Tolinka, to translates to lake. So, our village used to be filled with uh, lakes initially. So, you can still find uh, the remains of the lakes. So, whenever if you go to Tolinka and uh, view the landscapes there you can find uh, various kinds of uh, remains of the lake the landscape looks like the uh, lake but then there is no water it's all right it must be because of the climate change or maybe the human settlement so when we were kids we were told that it was all due to the mess uh, people created and in Bhutan, we believe that uh, the lakes are the residential place of these holy deities. So the holy deities live into the lakes and if the spirit leaves the lake, then the lake dries up or it bursts out. So we believe in that way. And during those days, uh, there were no not much of bathrooms, there were no bathrooms at all and the people had to go to the forest and in the bushes, nearby bushes and they must have dirty that place so that's why there are no lakes as of today and to talk about my details we are mongers and lungeli monger in Bhutan we called Munger. Actually, it was supposed to be Mugger, but then when we reached in Bhutan, uh, it changed to Munger. Uh, well, I know uh, during this 21st century, uh, we shouldn't be talking about the caste and all. However, I'm just talking about the history. So, Munger, and then from Munger, we are the Lungyelis. Uh, there are different kinds of divisions again Kotras and many more things uh, to get into details so from that during our ancestors time not just during our ancestors time even during these days uh, we can segregate uh, the relationship the relatives we have to recognize we get to uh, know our relatives and know how we are related and regarding the language people are curious you know people from other countries are curious about how come people of the town speak Nepali we not only speak Nepali language and in some of the places we also speak our mother tongue the language of for example Tamang, Mongar, Rai we all have our own language just like that we move also have our own language and the place i come from Tolinkar village hometown uh, we speak Mongar language out there and it's dominated by Mongar language so uh, you, you can also find tamang people out there but then just a few households speaks tamang language and the majority of the language is dominated by Mongar language and not just the people who live there, but then those who comes to settle in to learn Mughal language very quickly. I think it's very easy to catch up and learn. The way we speak, I heard uh, my aunt telling that it resembles the uh, Purbeli, Purbeli uh, Mongol language of Nepal. Uh, it uh, relates somehow, I think it somehow resembles Purbeli in the sense uh, the eastern part of Nepal and regarding where we came from I asked my relatives and then they say uh, we were from Sikkim well some Nepali speaking people of Bhutan came from Nepal uh, some came from Sikkim 
My aunt tells me that we can easily identify where our ancestors migrated from, whether it's from Sikkim or Nepal, by looking at the uh, color of the house. Our ancestors' religion were uh, Buddhism initially, centuries and centuries ago. And uh, talking about Buddhism, I saw some videos on YouTube telling that Lord Buddha too was a mother. I don't know uh, how true it is, but then before being Buddhist, uh, people were said to be following Buddhism. And then after, uh, after being Buddhist, people migrated to other places again and then uh, they migrated into Hindu communities so I think they converted their religion to Hinduism again tuning into the society they lived in. Well that's all about me, my hometown, where I am from and how did I reach Bhutan no, no not reach Bhutan, how my ancestors reached Bhutan I was actually born here. Actually, uh, during this modern era, not everybody would be interested in histories. However, I would be interested. So that's why I'm sharing my knowledge and whatever I received from my parents and relatives and all the things I hear around. So I would be interested in hearing your story and tell me where are you from? What is your history? Let me know in the comment section below. And uh, that's all for today. And signing off for now. See you next time.